tactical shots, queen sacrifices, theoretical endgames, time scramble. Day 2 had everything and I'm going to cover that in a bit. First, let's take a look at the results. In the match between Brutal Bishops and Quintessential Queens, their match ended in a draw with 3-3. And uh, Kingslayers mounted a comeback with 3.5, 2.5 against Pivotal Pawns. And uh, Crazy Knights lost to Ruthless Rooks. And Ruthless Rooks scored 4 points. And now, let's get started with the games. First, I have the game between Howie Fan and uh, Alexander Kostinovic. And in this position, after rook a c1, uh, white is actually threatening something. And uh, here, Alexandra Kostinik missed it. She played knight e7. In this position, bishop e7 was better. But after knight e7, the bishop hangs with bishop to e6. And uh, after bishop f2, rook f2, the king is stuck. It cannot castle on the queen side, cannot castle on the king side. And this was enough for uh, Hoi Fan. She built the advantage from here and had no problems to win the game. Next, there was a game between um, Indian and Ronak Sadwani. In this match, I felt that uh, Indian sacrificed the pawn but did not really manage to get the compensation. This b2 pawn he sacrificed, but nothing much happened after castle bishop e7. I think one way to play was with probably knight e5, bishop c2, queen d3, f4. This was one possible plan. But um, Indian went for knight a4 and then had to come back with his knight and later I don't think he had any uh, definite chance to come back in the game. Ronak played a really convincing game. Next the game between um, Khoneru Hampi and Wang Hao. So everything depended on this game because this was the last game and uh, if, uh, uh, if Hampi uh, was uh, getting a draw then they were winning but uh, Hampi lost the match. And uh, so the team also lost. So this was the position after rook g4 h2. It's a drawn position. So the quintessential queens came really close to winning this match after king e2, rook f5, king e1, rook c5. She picked up the pawn here in this position after rook e2. She played rook g6 and that was uh, a blunder. The point is that uh, black gets an automatic Lucina position after rook g6. Better was to just play move like uh, let's say rook b4 and just remain there and i think there's no way for black to make progress because rook check this king f2 rook check this king f1 and it's a draw but she played rook g6 and after rook takes a4 black is a pawn up and also black is threatening rook f4 so it's two pawns now and rook f4 is a dangerous threat and then if you take rook takes pawn which happened in the game there is this lucina by default the bridge is already built and the king will eventually manage to have the pawn promote. So a sample land could be rook h6 and then you can just play h1 queen. If you play rook g6, king h3, rook h6, it's just rook h4 and it's winning. So thus um, um, the team managed to win the match, I mean tie the match here, 3-3. Three, three. And then the game between uh, Tarini and uh, Priyanka, I think in this match after queen b6, a b6, White enjoys a nagging edge in my opinion. White can play bishop f4, pawn h3 based on these pawns. But the approach adopted by Tarani uh, I think just gave away the edge. After knight e5, knight c6, black has no problems whatsoever. After knight c6, b6, she played bishop g5 and even gave the double bishop. Uh, and after this it's like only black who's in the driving seat. And Priyanka won this game. Next, we have the game between uh, Arpita Mukherjee and uh, Savita Shri. In this particular game, um, she employed the Barry attack with knight c3, bishop f4 and queen d2. I think the critical position is here after rook takes e6. Uh, in this position, black can probably play king d7. Push this rook away. The rook cannot come to e4 because of knight f2 check. So white has to play bishop into g4 in this position. And black has good chances to draw in this rook endgame. But here in this position, Savita Shri went wrong with knight f2 and this knight on f2 got trapped. After king e2, knight is attacked and after knight, let's say if you go knight g4, there is king f3 and after knight h2, there is king f4 and this knight on h2 is somehow out of the game. In the game, she went knight h1 but after rook h6, uh, this position was... Clearly in vice favor, she went on to win the game.
all right let's go to the next game the game uh, which has the king slayers and here in this game abhijit gupta was white and anish kiri was black so let me just flip the board and uh, abhijit gupta played a trending line with bishop d2 and uh, this has been played many times by grandmaster sandeep anchanda and i have also covered that game of sandeep anchanda uh, i think uh, on his birthday he also plays the system and they won a very nice game with the white side after d5 and f3 b6 um anish giri revealed that uh, after bishop e2 c4 was his preparation and even e6 here was his uh, preparation he had seen something uh, after this as well and the point is he wants to bring this bishop back and make sure that the pawns are protected and he plays on the queen side with his pawns with b5 b4 in the game after 95 b5 f4 is also a possibility but then anish was intending to go bishop e7 here um, in this position after a4 uh, queen b6 queen c2 and then here knight c6 bishop f3 knight e7 black pieces are very well coordinated bishop f5 is also going to come very soon and that happened in the game after this b3 bishop f5 queen b2 black had everything that he needed and then came a moment where after ab ab abhijit gupta went for g4 now this position is object this move objectively is a mistake and uh, black immediately uh, anish giri found the refutation with the knight takes g4 and after knight g4 actually this position is winning already after bishop g4 knight d5 he could have simply played knight d5 bishop d5 and queen g6 and this position is lost the poor king has no defenders and after king h1 even a move like queen h5 attacking the bishop and also bishop d6 ideas uh, it's very clear that black is winning but in this position anish giri thought that uh, there is a nice opportunity to sacrifice the queen and uh, he did not take it lightly though he did calculate uh, the nuances involved with the queen sacrifices and uh, queen sacrifice and then uh, he calculated some lines and then went for this line the point is that he brings the rook into the game and this rook and bishop together uh, create a meeting net around the white king so after knight b6 rook b6 the rook is ready to come to g6 and the king has to make space for uh, you know running if white plays h4 in this position it's mate in 3 a nice puzzle if you're not done your puzzle rush today then here is a chance after rook check king h2 bishop check king h3 it's mate in 1 with bishop g2 so one thing is clear h4 is not working and so is the case with h3 as well because after h3 also you have the same checkmate so in this position after rook b6 uh, white has to make space for the king on the king side i mean towards e1 d1 he has to run towards the queen side so rook d1 makes sense even in this position rook e1 doesn't work because after rook g6 checking f1 black can play rook g2 and then go via rook h2 to, to rook h1 and it's again a mate you can you can take the bishop if you want but there's nobody to stop you uh, stop this mate you know so eventually uh, abhijit gupta played rook f1 and after rook check knight bishop to d6 now this bishop wants to go to h2 and threaten the mate so white king has to make space again so bishop a5 because he wants to run and then came knight d5 very precise the point is that it invites uh, white to come but at the same time black has this c3 response so whenever the king is coming in this route there is this c3 move and this diagonal is a problem for white and after bc bc king e1 he played rook b8 bringing the last piece and then got c3 this was seen by anish kiri in advance and that is why he was so confident and here there's one last uh, detail which you must keep in mind that after bishop before queen before don't be very excited and capture the queen it's important to give a check and then this that um, you know distract this rook here with rook takes e1 and only then take the queen otherwise uh, you know there's a back rank mate here So this is a very cool game and which is you know buzzing around in social media the game between uh, Anish Giri and Abhijit Gupta and as uh, Tanmay mentioned this is it's not about the win it's about winning 
and i think this game was amazing by anish congrats to anish giri for such a nice game now coming to um, kartik and murli versus uh, sasikiran in this clash um, you know the team uh, i think it was important for uh, the overall uh, match score also and because kartik and managed to beat uh, sasikiran uh, their team won so here after e4 c6 knight c3 d5 instead of playing the two knights he directly transposes to the main line with d4 and uh, they play this knight of 6 line i think the critical position in this game is after a4 bd6 c3 rook 8 rook 8 queen 8 white wants to just bring out all the pieces into the game so he plays queen c2 and then brings the bishop brings the rook yeah very harmonious uh, position for white and now he uh, he builds a lot of pressure on the diagonal and also on the five and you will know what i mean he plays rook e3 knight d2 knight d2 he wants to come to e4 provoking f5 and now he comes back to f3 because now e5 square can be occupied and after b5 b3 b4 bishop a1 the bishop is making space for the queen to come to b2 that's an important point to note and after rook a8 he plays a d5 and in this position um, rook e3 followed by knight h5 black can still keep playing but after d5 c d5 the game is just lost because queen b2 there's a mating threat on g7 and h8 and when you play f6 there's just queen f6 and if you play d4 there's just queen takes d4 which happened in the game the queen is overloaded and uh, if rook e3 there is a mate if queen d4 also there is a mate so this win really helped the team and uh, the only other remaining game i think from the top two boards yeah this is the first board yeah is the sikaru versus uh, temur rajabov and right from the opening rajabov got uh, a very good position is often known as uh, raja in the world of chess i think black had no problem equalizing and in this position after bishop g4 queen g5 this is where i feel that things changed uh, here hikaru could have played f3 and then uh, um, since the knight is hanging after bishop f5 maybe something like bishop f5 and knight e5 this is possible but in this position hikaru played knight d2 and uh, this is where i think the problem started black first played rook c d8 uh, and you can already see it's keeping an eye on the queen indirectly and after knight e4 d e4 the pawn on d4 is always in some sort of trouble after rook c4 black got an extra move with f5 and then knight f6 this is amazing position for black all the pieces are in action and uh, in a few moves rajabov was able to increase the pressure further with f5 and then doubling of the rooks on the d line and then i think uh, he got the c5 pawn and then the position became so dangerous that uh, the, the the white king was really really weak uh, let me get to that position i think it's here after queen takes c6 your black played e3 and the king is in trouble f3 is obviously not possible because of uh, mate and this is a well known smothered mate so after e3 queen f3 black won that pawn as well and uh, table rest of won the game so if you look at the results again in the match between um, king slayers and pivotal pawns king slayers won and and here crazy knights lost to ruthless rooks and the, and the, the one the two games that i showed you were from uh, ruthless rooks uh, wins I mean Kartik and Murli and Rajabo both of them won and uh, and you can also see Anna Muzichuk also won that also helped the team and uh, brutal bishops versus quintessential queens with it took a quick draw against Karyakin and uh, eventually the team drew the match and if you look at the overall standings after day 2 uh, you know the competition is now increasing because uh, like every team has now started their account uh, at the moment brutal bishops are leading they're in the top position then comes the ruthless rooks and pivotal pawns crazy knights are in the fourth position 
the king slayers are back and they are now in the fifth position the quintessential queens are in the sixth position i think they were very uh, closely fought matches today and quintessential queens were very close to winning day 3 is going to be equally exciting probably the hype will you know go even beyond and um, also i would suggest that you all watch uh, the game between biswa and um, uh, bhanu they played a match the fastest human calculator he was calculating uh, mathematical sums and also playing the game you can watch it on uh, samarayana's channel at the end of uh, the day 2 stream um it's it's fascinating and it will definitely blow your mind and with that i'm going to sign off and uh, say thank you very much thanks for watching i hope you like the video and uh, keep watching the match keep watching these games keep supporting the players i'll be back with another video soon until then take care bye bye